Hi, my name is Alan Edwards, and in this Estranged Dev blog, I'm going to show you how to uh, make a component, a blueprint component, that allows your uh, physically simulated meshes to make impact sounds when you throw them around. So I'm just going to give you a quick demo of this. So see here we have uh, three uh, metal barrels. Now these are from the asset store. You can, you can download them yourself. Um, but I'm going to make each one physically simulated. So I'm going to select model simulate physics that's playing in the editor. So now you'll notice I can move them around. And we actually have some code in a strange that lets you pick them up. Um, I won't go into that this video, so we can go over that in a, in a future video. But you'll notice that when you drop them, when you bash into them, they don't really make sounds. They just completely silent. And the only thing you can hear is the ambience we've got here and my footsteps. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add uh, a custom blueprint component that I'm going to create in this tutorial to it called BP Impacts. So let's go ahead and do that. So now each one has this uh, BP Impacts blueprint on it. You'll notice that when you walk into them, when you throw them around, whoops, that one flew off into the air. <laughs> well, that's a good example. They now play uh, a metal impact sound, which I think grounds them more into the levels. Now, this needs tweaking. I think right now it's a little bit too uh, sensitive. You notice know, it kind of makes the same noise whether I do that or whether I, I throw it in the air. Um, but this is, this is the basis, and this is all blueprints, so we can just tweak it on the fly. So let's take a look at the actual blueprint that's powering this. So as I said, um, this is a, uh, an actor blueprint, uh, sorry, an actor component, because um, that means that it can be added to any actor, and it doesn't have a transform, it's very simple. It feeds off the uh, physics events of the primitive component it's attached to, so let's take a look. Uh, okay. So BP impacts, here we go. So um, first thing to note about actor components, uh, they're a little bit different to blueprint actors because they don't have a construction script. Now I think in C++, well I know in C++ they do. Um, so I'm not sure if this is on the roadmap for Unreal Engine uh, in a future release, but uh, right now you can't have a construction script, but that's okay because um, this uh, component fires on the uh, event begin play. So let's just delve into this. So what we need to check first when we be begin playing is whether we're attached to a primitive component. Now a primitive component can have a uh, rigid body collision. So that's what we need. And the static mesh uh, component is a primitive component. So if we get the owner, the owning actor, and then get its root component, and then we cast that root component to a primitive component, uh, if it's not, we just print an error saying, you're an idiot, stop, act stop adding this component to something that can't use it. Uh, if it is a primitive component, we then enable this uh, notify rigid body collision uh, boolean. And this lets us respond to physics events. Without this enabled, I can just show you that right now, uh, we don't get any of this feedback. So we need that enabled. So I'm forcing that on all of the... Uh, all of the, the components that, that, all of the actors that implement this component blueprint. So let's enable that again, compile. Okay, so, uh, so we set uh, that we want to notify rigid body collision, uh, and then we bind an event to on actor hit. Now on actor hit fires when the actor is impacted in the physics world, so um, we need to respond to that every time. So uh, very simple, we just have a, a hit event, which is a custom event, uh, it lets you create one of these when you when you drag off here, so you don't actually have to create this. Um, so then when this fires, we have this impulse threshold variable. It's a private variable inside the class, so we can, we can tweak it for everything. So uh, I'm, I've set that to something arbitrary, like 5,000. That was just what came out of my testing. So if the, if the impact force is below that, then it won't play the sound. So let's change that to zero and see what happens. So you'll hear that when the object is moving around and settling, it still 
fires the impact event. So even though I'm scaling the volume there, you can still hear it. So I'm going to set that back to 5,000 because that's quite a, a good number. Obviously, all of this can be tweaked later very simply because it's in Blueprint. So if you find a level where it's not quite working out, you can tweak that. So, uh, so first thing we do is, uh, is get the normal imp impulse, get the length of that vector, and then check it's over our threshold. Uh, and then if it is, then we can go ahead and uh, fetch the effect to play. So what we need to do here is, uh, is loop over our array here of impact effects. Now, impact effect here is a data blueprint. And I like data blueprints because you define them in C++. Uh, they're basically just objects that hold pointers. Um, but uh, you can then edit uh, what, what the data blueprint contains in the editor. So I'm just going to show you our... Uh, metal hollow impact data blueprint. So here we go. So it, it's it's uh, of type uh, EST impact effects. Um, so it's an instance of that, and it has a few simple things. So uh, if you watch the footsteps tutorial, this will seem quite familiar. It links to a physical material. Uh, so that in this case, metal hollow, uh, and it also defines an array of sounds to play. So right now we have two. So uh, these are. These are, these are just sounds that, that play upon impact. So there's that one, and there's the other one. Um, I'm actually repurposing this. I originally built this for uh, weapon uh, bullet impact. So I think I'll be able to use it for that later as well, which is quite nice. So we have a decal here and optional particle system. And some props, when they hit the ground, they might need to spawn a particle system anyway. So we can implement that later. OK, so that's that. So uh, in our blueprint over here, we have a private variable that has uh, both of the, uh, the existing data blueprints here. That I, I just showed you one of those. So any other uh, physical material to sound data blueprints, we'll have to add them in here. Um, and this will just keep a record of that. So when we get impacted and it's over our threshold, we loop through this impacts effects, impact effects uh, array and look at each one. And then what we need to do is match up the physical material. So uh, what we do is we get the material from our primitive component at element index zero. Now this might need to be a bit more tolerant in the future of uh, primitive components with multiple materials, but for now we're just using the first material. And then from that, we get the physical material and then check whether it equals uh, this, uh, the current iteration physical material. If it does, then we've got the right thing. And we can go ahead and pick a random sound. Now this, this, this code here just looks at the sounds array inside that data blueprint and looks at the length, takes away one, and then just gets a random uh, index from there and gets that sound. So we get a random sound every time. There's only two to pick from, so it's not very random at the minute, but hopefully in the future we can have lots of different sounds to pick from. So then we spawn sound at location and just fire and forget that sound. Uh, and the location is set to the hit impact point. So uh, the volume multiplier here uh, is taken from the, uh, the the threshold here is calculated from the same value. So it's the it's the impulse of the hit. So we take that and then we divide it by this volume sensitivity. Now this is just something I. I got out of uh, playing around. I thought, oh, this is a good value. Uh, so we just divide our impulse by that. Uh, could probably be a, a more sane calculation here, but this is just a just one that, that works for now. Uh, then we make sure it doesn't go above one, because if it does, it will start clipping. Uh, I can show you that. That's quite fun. Let's make sure, let's make the minimum like 50,000. That'll be interesting. Very, very loud. And it does start clipping if you if you push it too far. So Oof. Yep. So uh, let's get out of that. Let's go back to the uh, impact blueprint. So let's change that back to one because we don't want it going over one. Uh, and that just scales the volume accordingly. So what we can do uh, just to illustrate this is just print a string. Uh, with the volume every time we make an impact here. So let's do that. 
save, let's minimize this. So let's go ahead and play now. So that volume was one, we had a 0.5 there, 0.6 as it fell. Just wait for the other spam to go away. So there we go, getting about half there. Now, any of these parameters can be, twe uh, can be tweaked in the future because they are uh, just private members of this blueprint. So uh, it's very easy to tweak them and all we do is, is edit them and compile the blueprint. And uh, it's a very nice way of uh, adding a bit of realism into the levels. So hopefully this, this blueprint will evolve in the future. Okay, uh, that's it for this, this dev blog. Thank you very much for watching.